there. How are you? Um, it's Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting in Needham, Massachusetts, sitting here in my yarn shop, surrounded by beautiful color and softness. Um, and it's a delight to come in to work and see all of this. Um, apropos of this season, I thought I would show you a fun pattern that I came across for, and you, this whole thing today is going to be, our whole episode will be about gift giving and um, quick knits and things for the holidays. Um, this is a pattern put out by Schockenmeyer, which is a, uh, they're a yarn producer, and it's for um, ornaments. And this is something, if you're looking for just a little gift for someone, these are all the patterns that come with it. They're very simple. You can do them on double pointed needles or on um, circulars. They're small and you just knit the pattern. It's essentially is this. You can see the chart, but I'll show you um, the actual charts. And they're very simple color work, something if you want to learn color work and practice, these are great ones to use. Plus, you could actually use these charts for other things, you know, for, for uh, winter, Christmas kinds of things. So um, I thought somebody might be interested in making these. They're a quick little gift. It's a nice gift if you're going to somebody's house to a Christmas party. Um, to bring one of these. I think what you do is you make, I'm pretty sure you make the, um, you're going to make the ornament and then you fit it around a Christmas ball. And they give you the dimensions and you can see here they're around, whether you use a styrofoam ball, which kind of might be easy to do, and then you just get a little hook and hang it wherever. So, um, and you can probably use, they use a fingering weight yarn. You could probably use anything you have hanging around the house. I guess it's a question of fitting it around the ball. Um, so if you're interested, and I believe, now I may give you misinformation, I think that this was a free pattern. And I think that you can find it under this name, 24 Yule Kuehler, I believe. So that's just one idea. And this is, we're going to be a little random today, which I guess I am every day. I've been um, knitting socks, and I think socks can be a great um, holiday gift. And <coughs> they're certainly doable if you, in a week or two, if you were using a worsted weight yarn and we've been doing that because we've been making socks for Ukrainian soldiers and we had our first batch well, was six or seven that Agnes delivered because she had to make sort of an emergency trip to Latvia for a funeral and so she took some with her and they ended up and I'll get the skinny on this later today when she comes in but she ended up somehow at the Latvian parliament where they they had heard about the socks being knit, and they had them on display there. But she'll tell me more about that. So they, I'm assuming that um, they're going to be on their way to soldiers. So we still have another month of sock making for those of you who would like to um, make socks for the soldiers. Remember, they should be kind of big and on a uh, superwash wool. So I have, what I've been doing is, um, the Barocco Ultra Wool, which is a worsted weight. And what I'm doing, and I discovered this only because I'd made another pair of socks, and uh, something on my lip. Um, and one was slightly bigger than the other, which annoyed me because I thought I was being so careful. But um, what I decided to do, and I often do this, I knit two at a time. And a couple of good reasons for doing that. And of course, I've got two separate needles. And what I did was I'm pulling from the inside 
and the outside of this big ball. I could have divided it, but I'm way too lazy for that. Um, so I can measure them really well. I can also check um, to see, you know, and I can see all the time if I'm doing them the same. But the other thing, and what I discovered on my other um, sock was that I had knit a little differently. You know, I was knitting looser, tighter, I don't know what was going on. But this way, if I do them at the same time, I'm going to get the exact same knit. So if I'm a little looser, and I, what I do is I knit segments. So I give myself some time and think about the amount of time I have. And I do a little bit of this and a little bit of this. That way, I'm exactly sure. The other thing you could do to make sure they're exactly the same length is you can start from, you can see where the increases have stopped, and you can count rows. And I had a friend once who religiously counted rows on her socks to make sure they were exactly the same. I'm not quite that particular about my knitting, but if you are, you can count rows or you can keep track of the rows. So from here to um, from here uh, to where you begin the uh, heel gusset. And so to make sure they're exactly the same, um, you just keep measuring. Um, I wanted to show you uh, an amazing thing that I learned from uh, Agnes the other day is the Turkish cast on for toe up socks. And we've been doing Judy's Magic Cast On, which I can just very quickly show you. It, there's kind of a difficult learning curve on it. You put some yarn over the top needle, you twist them, and then you're constantly getting confused because which needle goes where, blah, blah, blah. And what it does is it puts it gives you that very nice cast on where you, at the toe where you can't see a seam and you end up with stitches on each needle. Well, the easier way to do this is to make a slip knot, which I think everybody knows how to do that. But if you don't know how to do something, remember Mr. Google knows everything. And so what I want is a total Let's say I want a total of 10 stitches. So what I'm going to do is wrap my yarn around five times. Five, OK? And this is your slip knot, which will um, get left taken away later. And I'm going to pull out the bottom needle, and I'm going to knit into that first ditch. And it's a little weird because this is just getting, the yarn's getting wrapped around the cable, but you're going to knit with that. So I'm going to knit across one, whoa, this is split of yarn that I choose, chose, two, three, four, and five. So now I have five stitches. Ignoring the um, slip knot. So I turned my needle around and my needles are now going to point to the right. I pull out the needle where I just knit those stitches and the ones that were hanging out on the cable are going to slide up and the needle with the yarn attached, which is this bottom needle, is going to knit into these stitches that we just pulled up. Now remember, you always want to be knitting into, not into those bumps. Can you see the bumps? If you knit into the, that way, on that side of it, you're incorrect. You want to knit into this side of it that has the flats, other, otherwise some often known as the knit stitches. So I'm going to knit across here, and 
sort of. This is the splittiest yarn I've ever seen. Goodness. I miscounted. I have six on the other side, but that doesn't matter. Oh, I know. I knit the uh, the one with the um, slip knot on, but that doesn't matter. This is what you want to end up with, and so that will be the toe of your sock. And then you just keep going. You knit another round, and then you start the increases for your sock. So this is a great, and you could do it with a mitten. Some mittens are knit from the top down. Um, and this is a, for a toe-up magic loop sock. So I highly recommend it. You can look it up. It's a Turkish cast-on. It's the easiest thing in the world, and so you don't have to suffer through trying to learn Judy's magic cast-on, which once you get it, it's easy, but I, I think I would use this from now on just because why not? It's simple. So that's my tip for socks. Um, there's still plenty. If you use a worsted weight or even if you use our um, black sheep knitting pattern, you can use almost any weight. You can use any weight um, yarn. You just have to do a gauge. And Next, I, I'm going to show you some, again, we're on this same theme of gift giving, um, some more simple projects that you can do in a very short amount of time. The first one, and you've seen this before, but it bears um, looking at again. This is the Sophie scarf. And I'm going to put it on because I think it's so cute on. And if you're looking for just a quick gift, it's just got some increases and decreases. And it's um, got an I-cord um, edging, which is wonderful. It's a great little thing to learn because you can use it on um, you can use it on any kind of shawl or scarf um, to have a nice edge and one that isn't going to curl. So this one is done in the Road to China Light, which is a beautiful soft yarn, but um, we also have in stock um, cashmere. And this, I think you can do this in one skein. I'm not entirely sure. You'd have to look at the pattern. But the cashmere is delightful. You'd want to wear it around your neck. We have these colorways. This is a beautiful um, kind of a magenta, purpley magenta. And then this tweed, this marled black and gray, which I just, or black and white, which I love. That's kind of up my alley. And there's a black. I actually saw one today on Ravelry that was striped even, which would be fun. You could take and stripe it. This pretty orange and a white, charcoal gray, which is lovely, and um, this taupey color or a beige. And these are a hundred and it's about 120 yards, so I can't remember from the pattern. Um, I think there's a small size and a large size, but I really like this. I don't know if it goes with my outfit, but it's wonderful. Another idea, and this you can knit in a couple of nights, really, or over the weekend. Another really quick knit is, this is called Cozy Ribbed Scarf. And the nice thing about this, this is a cowl that you can put around, I don't know why we called it scarf, but just put it around your neck. It's wonderfully warm. And this you can make in, it's on a size 15 needle. So, this is a perfect quick gift, and I'll show you some ideas um, for yarns. First one I'm going to show you is the um, Ultra Alpaca Chunky. And these are their series in natural colors. So I'm assuming these are undyed. So these are the colors from the sheep. And this one is called sunflower seed. I don't know why. Well, I guess a sunflower seed can look like that. This is millet. And this one is called poppy seed. It's a pretty gray. 
and I love these because they're very soft and they're kind of chunky and this is called sourdough now you can change your needle this um, the needle recommended on this is a 10 but if you want something loose and floppy you can go up to the 15 or you can try anything in between um, so this one was called oh, I said sourdough and this one is farrow and this is a what would you say Robin a gray it's a dark charcoal gray I think is what I would call it another um, and I've shown these yarns many times but I just again can't I can't recommend this yarn enough this is the Amelie from Illimani and it's an alpaca merino and mulberry silk and this is I've been making a sweater in it as some of you have seen this is just delightful so this would be perfect for this um, and then one other thing that I saw if you're into color you might want to do um, we got some, a couple new colors in and we restocked the Micha um, but if you want to do something in color these are some pretty colors this is a new one to us I think we've had it in the Machida but this is Micha and this is called Anemone um, but fun color and this one is called Peggy uh, and we have others but that's an idea and it's also an idea for another quick knit that we have and I didn't bring it over but the um, I was about to walk away with the microphone on me which I won't but Robin's gonna get it, get it. it's over on the counter right by the computer this is um, the Aquin Aquina call cowl um, by Erica Field who did a workshop here she's a local designer and this is it this one may take a little bit longer but you could still do this by the holidays I think it's very pretty on and would keep you super super warm you can wear it down on your shoulders or um, when you're putting your coat on you scrunch it up and it's all around your neck it's just lovely and this Micha which is a super wash merino I'll show you one combination that I thought was very pretty. So this is two colorways, and um, it would take two skeins of the Micha. So uh, we have some of those kitted up, or we can choose some colors for you. The shop is available on Ravelry, I mean the pattern's available on Ravelry, or we can get it for you in the shop. So that's another quick knit and a good would be a lovely lovely gift for someone and then I have another one our wonderful Beth designed this little hat called BSK fast dash beanie and it's made with this fun yarn called dash and she used a sight size 10 and 13 so the 10 or 10 and a half and a 13 the 10 and a half was for the ribbing and it's a simple very quick knit on that size needle and it just puts these little stripes in here and there so we have these colors I don't know if we have a, the red available well, it might be downstairs but there was one that had red and blue in it but these are some fun colors and that again is a quick knit would work for a boy or a girl man or woman either one particularly like this one is grays and this one is navy blues blues and this had some green in it I think as I look at this these are all the blues maybe the green and blue is gone we'll have to look at our stock downstairs to see and then in the same yarn is a pattern called Kika and this is a lovely little vest that if you're vests are kind of in now and I find they're great because you can wear them around and you just don't have the sleeves and when you're putting on a coat you don't have to struggle with the sleeves but it keeps you super super warm so this is a fun fast knit and this was done on a US 13 and it takes this size is a 40 and a quarter so that's probably I mean that's a medium I think or a lar larger size medium but it takes three skeins so you know that's a quick knit if it's three skeins 
So that would be a fun thing to do and a very fun thing to wear, I think. Nice and warm. I was in, um, took, played hooky yesterday and met a friend down in the seaport in Boston. And it was kind of raw and cold out, but I had on a wool sweater, just a turtleneck and then my down jacket. And I was so cozy. And I just want to sing the praises again of wool. Wearing a wool sweater is amazing for keeping you warm. So if you layer up with turtleneck and um, with a, um, a warm sweater, a wool sweater, even I, ha I have on a vest today that it is wool, and um, it just keeps you um, very warm. Speaking of warm, I have another one more sample to show you. This is, and I apologize, this was made in a yarn from um, Malabrigo that we had last year. I don't have it this year, but I have the equivalent in the Rasta. And this is a sweater that I swear you could do in a week. And it is called um, Kingston Sweater. And it's by a woman named Tara Lynn Morrison. And I think it's Morrison or Munson, but you can find her. And she has a, a bunch of um, sweaters in these really chunky, big wools. And this one, I think I knitted on a 15, but it could be a 13. And you'll see how quickly that will go. I have some people in my class who've been making a couple of, have made a couple of them in a few weeks. Um, you can make your neck any way you want. And um, the sleeves as long or short as you want. But she has others, so you can look on Ravelry. And I'll just show you a couple examples of yarns that I pulled. These are Rasta, of course. And this is a, a yarn called Caracol. Um, and I, I think they still make it, but I don't, we didn't sell a lot of it last year, so I didn't um, reorder. Um, I just ordered Rasta because people seem to like it. So I just picked some that I knew I had sweater quantities of, and I think we have more, ra oh, I know we have more, more Rasta coming in next week. I placed a huge order. So anybody who wants quick gifts made of Rasta will have plenty, I think, by the end of next week. So this one's called Teal Feather particular favorite of mine. And um, this one is Purple Mystery. And um, this is called Trompo, a nice variegated, and Candy King. I love this one. It has lots of color. Now, the one of the things she shows in her sweater, and it might even be in this one, the Kingston, is she does them in big color blocks. So you could take you know, two or three colors. Say you've got a couple skeins at home, you don't know what to do with them. Come in and match them up or buy um, some to do in color blocks. You could stripe, you can, so you, the wonderful thing about knitting is that you can take one pattern that you like and you can do all kinds of things with it. You know, suppose you have just a little bit of, of one color left. Well, why not put um, just cuffs in one color? or cuffs and um, the, the neck band in one color. So you can improvise. You could, what if you mixed up these two or these two together in stripes? Um, so you can fool around with that kind of thing. Again, this is a quick knit, and it's wonderful. If you're somebody who does a lot of dog walking, uh, you might love to have a sweater like this. You just throw it on. or and since the cost of fuel, heating fuel, is going up this winter, you may be one of those people who now has your thermostat down to 62, heaven forbid. Um, but you might want to be, you know, saving some money this year. You ha wear a sweater like this around and a pair of wool socks. Where did my socks go? Wherever they went. A pair of wool socks on your feet, you will be a happy so I'm over here at our gift table, and I wanted to show you some amazing, oh my gosh, I just looked at how inexpensive these are. Um, they're $35 for this amazing um, project bag made by Fiola, and in this fabric, 
I'll have to restrain myself because I want to buy this right now, but I'll leave it for a customer. Hopefully she'll make us some more. But it has snaps, so you can close it or you can turn it this way and knit out of it like this. Um, they stand up. This is a waxed canvas on the bottom. And here's another one. She's into birds today, uh, this week. So look at these cardinals. Aren't they beautiful? Um, so I'd like any one of those. We have more soaps from Fiola, and they're wonderful. I love to put these in the bath with me. And oh, sorry, only one of these. I hope she'll make some more. These are the Amazing Body Balm, which you just rub on you, and its I just think it's so fun. So here is another bird. These are her little notions bags, and you can throw them in here. You could actually even probably have a sock in there. And Robin's going to show me some others. Here's a Christmas theme or a winter theme with a snowman with cute inside. And let's see these others. Oh, more. Dropped one. Sorry. Here are her little ones that I think are fabulous for all of your um, stitch markers. Here's another bird theme. Love that bird. Oh, and these. This is so sweet with these little birds peeking out. Love that. Is that... I thought I heard the UPS guy, but I didn't. Wishful thinking. And then look at this bird. How sweet. I just love birds. And then this is just a cute decorative one. So those are some fun things, little items that you can get as a gift for someone. Hopefully she'll bring us more before the season is over. So I want to wish you, I think Hanukkah's coming up, right Robin? On Sunday? Sunday. So I want to wish everyone a happy Hanukkah. And we'll continue to get ready for Christmas and New Year's. And um, we'll be open um, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, and probably until 5 o'clock. So if you need to do any last minute shopping. And we'll be open the week in between um, Christmas and New Year's as well. So have fun, everyone. Um, knit up those little gifts. Enjoy those small projects. I've been doing socks, and it's a lot of fun because they're fast, and you get a lot of satisfaction from them. So happy holidays, happy baking, happy knitting, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.